Dich hat schon immer Irish Stick Fighting interessiert. Dich hat schon immer der Umgang mit einem Shillelagh interessiert. Wir waren in Manchester und haben ein Interview geführt mit einem der größten Meister im Irish Stick Fighting. Wenn dich das interessiert, dann ist dieses Video etwas für dich. Hallo, mein Name ist Christian Hausecke und ich bin CEO von der Sobudu Akademie. Im Rahmen dieser Sobudu Akademie stellen wir euch immer wieder andere Kampfkünste vor. Heute stellen wir euch die Keegan Butter Irish Stick Fighting von Großmeister Simon Keegan vor. Wir waren in Manchester und haben Sensei Simon Keegan besucht. Das Video mit dieser Reise findest du hier in dieser Infocard. Und jetzt wünsche ich dir viel Spaß bei dem Interview und unserem Video. I was taught martial arts first by my father. So I have studied many martial arts. I've taught karate for 20, 25 years. I've done Jiu Jitsu, I've done Tai Chi. Um, but early on, my father introduced me to Uh, boxing and more uh, street self-defense and also including the Irish stick. Um, so my family, Keegan, uh, is Irish. Uh, it comes from an Irish clan called McKeegan, originally from the part of Ireland called Westmeath. Um, my family moved from Westmeath to the Dublin area, Dublin, Drogheda, And then they moved over to Liverpool, where a lot of Irish people lived. And they worked on the, on the docks around Liverpool. And then through the generations, um, it came to my father and me. I don't know, I guess maybe when I was about five or six, seven, something like that. Um, when I was little anyway and um, we would start some of the things that I showed you today so we would start with um, the hand techniques the boxing the elbow strikes but then also we'd pick up the stick and we would do a lot of two-handed um, close quarter techniques from here um, but we'd also do uh, single-handed stick fencing with it as well The way that my father, you know, I, I have trained with many teachers of karate, of jiu-jitsu, of tai chi, of kung fu, of judo, aikido. And what I, now what I realize when I look back is that the most practical, most effective things I ever learned was taught to me by my dad. And um, my dad died a, a few years ago. He died in um, the end of 2001. And I wanted to do something to pass on his memory because I was already teaching karate but my dad was not that interested in karate. I wanted to do something that was about my dad and I considered maybe getting back into Tai Chi or something because my dad liked Tai Chi but then I thought no I'm going to teach the Irish stick the way that my dad taught me and would, even when I was maybe close to 40 I'd still go to my dad's house and we'd get the sticks or, you know, and we'd show new mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah. We'd train together and I was always, I was always learning from him. And so it's special to me because it's my culture, it's my heritage, it's what I learned off my dad. Um, but also because I think it's effective. And I also think, you know, I'm never going to be walking along the street with a sword or a spear. Mm -hmm. But I might be walking along the street with a walking stick or I might be hiking and I might need to defend myself. Yeah. And so the things that's in this system, I think, are as relevant today as they were 150 years ago. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you very much. So the history of the Irish stick, um, in the 17th century onwards um, you would see 17th and 18th century you would see swords like this being used by jacobites in ireland and scotland um, after the battle of the boyne and the battle of offering 
the Irish were banned from many things. Um, practicing some of the native Gaelic culture and language, but also the carrying of weapons. So what they would do is they would use a walking stick as a weapon. Now, originally they would be oak. Um, the legend says that Shillelagh in Wicklow was where the best oak was grown. And so um, originally oak was called a shillelagh. But then as the English cut the forests down, you couldn't get oak. So what they started to use was the um, bushes, the black thorns, the hawthorns, the white thorns, which took a lot longer because it would take a few years for it to dry out. But then when it dried out, it would dry hard like this. And it would have, if you can see, the root ball here, we'll call the merlan in Irish. So this could be used to strike with, but at the same time, you could use some of the same principles that you could with the sword. Um, but as we talked about, you, they would need to be adapted. So after the um, United Irish Rebellion, which was in um, 1798, which Keegan's fought um, in that rebellion in a number of battles around Wexford, um, there was further protest against tithes. So tithes, tithe protest was against unfair ways that people were taxed and people had to pay unfair rent on their land. And eventually these tithe protests became organized factions that would try to stand up to the Church of Ireland and try to stand up to the English authorities. One of the um, factions was called the Whitefeet faction. They were called the Whitefeet because they had limestone dust on their boots because they were stonemasons and they worked in a limestone quarry. So my great, great, great grandfather, who was called John Keegan, was born in 1818, uh, was a limestone stonemason. Um, at the time, the Whitefeet started in the area where the Keegans had lived for a thousand years, which is Athlone, uh, which is between Athlone bridges the River Shannon. You've got Roscommon on one side and Westmeath on the other. So originally they would fight against the authorities to stand up for the rights of the people. Then they found themselves in faction fights using the shillelaghs against opposing factions like um, the Blackfeet, as, as they were called. They were um, people who were called ribbon men. The ribbon men could be recognized by the green sash that they wore around their waist, who were Catholic, Irish, as opposed to the Orange Lodge and the Peeper Day Boys, who wore the orange and they were Protestant. So some of these faction fights became uh, sectarian. So then when the um, famine, as they call it, um, took hold, a lot of the protests became secondary because if you were starving to death, you, your only priority is food. So a lot was lost during the famine as well and a lot of people emigrated as we know. So my family moved to Liverpool in 1858. So that was my great, great, great grandparents, John Keegan, a uh, stonemason, and Mary Casey, who was from Cork. The, the Casey were a Cork uh, faction as well. Uh, there's good literature on the Caseys. And they lived in a part of Liverpool called Birkenhead, which is um, the opposite side of the River Mersey to Liverpool. And at that time, there was more Irish in Liverpool than any Irish city with the exception of Dublin, Belfast and Cork. So there was more Irish people in Liverpool than there was in Antrim or Limerick. And so the factions came over as well. So you had the Molly Maguires, you had the Ribbon Men, you had um, the Orange Lodge came to Liverpool. And in the 1850s and 1860s, quite serious faction fights broke out in Birkenhead. 
Uh, some of them are recorded in what the newspapers at the time called the Reign of Shillelagh, or Bludgeon Law, or Cudgel Law. And this saw hundreds of men, hundreds of Irish Catholic dock workers fighting against the Orange Lodge, who did not think that all of these Irish coming into their country were welcome. And they would fight with shillelaghs, cudgels, cutlasses, sabres, sometimes guns. And the base of the Irish Catholic contingent was the street where my family lived, uh, which was called, um, it was uh, Flamount Street on Pri off Price Street in Birkenhead. So then, about 10 or 15 years later, my family crossed the River Mersey and went to live in a part of Liverpool called Kirkdale, which is around, again, around the docks. The only, even if you were a skilled craftsman like a stonemason, if you were Irish, the only work you could get was building the railways or working on the docks or maybe working down the mine. So it, they were quite secondary citizens. So then my family went to work on the dock uh, timber yards around the Canada dock, it's called. It's, it's north of the well-known Albert dock. And then they found that they were um, preyed upon by, by criminal gangs. There's a criminal gang at the time called the High Rip, and they would use belt buckles, as I demonstrated earlier. They would use knives, they would use sticks. And so what the dock workers did and the timber yard labourers did was they made shillelaghs because they were ribbon men. Their fathers taught them how to make shillelaghs. So they made shillelaghs from the timber and then once again there were faction fights between the uh, timber yard labourers and the criminal gangs like the high rib. And so um, the area around the Liverpool docks from um, the 1850s right through to probably the 1960s it was very dangerous and still quite segregated so my, my dad was born in 1950 and he first went to work on the docks in 1967 i think it was or 68 and his job was running messages from the ships to the shipping offices and he worked for a big shipping company ship brokers called Stavely taylor and he um, used to walk home. He lived in a place called Kirby in Nosley at this point. He used to walk home along the dock road 10 miles and he used to carry one of these for his self-defense. And he advised me that what he liked about one of these was the way that it bounced off somebody's head when they struck him. Um, so then from my dad, it came down to me. So that's a little history of us. Thank you. Das war das Video mit Interview von Sensei Simon Keegan Irish Stick Fighting. Hat dir das Video gefallen? Dann drücke unten den Like Button und abonniere unseren Kanal. Jetzt habe ich aber noch eine Frage an dich. Hast du eine Frage betreffend dieses Videos? Dann schreib es bitte unten in die Kommentare. Interessieren dich andere Themen betreffend Kampfkünste? Dann frag uns. Schreib es bitte unten in die Kommentare. Wir werden es beantworten. Wir sind schon wieder am Ende und ich danke dir für deine Zeit. Arigato Kuchmaster.